Today we will be looking at the cat respiratory system. So to begin, we will fold back the ribs to observe the lungs are the first things that are easily visible. If we look in the throat here though, we can see this is the trachea. So if you actually follow the path of air into the body, it comes in through the nose, past the nasal cavity, then from the pharynx, the pharynx is going to be able to conduct food to the esophagus and air to the larynx. So if we look in here, we can see the larynx. This is called the thyroid cartilage. You can see it gets that name because of its close association to the thyroid glands. Again, cats have two thyroid glands. They're not connected by an isthmus like they are in humans, which you can see there. So this is the larynx, which is the voice box. So air will go from the pharynx to the larynx to the trachea and into the bronchial tree. So I'd like to cut away this larynx so we can see an important structure that's involved in keeping food and air on the right path. So if we look down in here, you can see this is the epiglottis. So the epiglottis is elastic cartilage that flops down over the larynx when you're swallowing. So that food can go behind in the esophagus. The esophagus then leads to your stomach. So here, these are the, this is the epiglottis that's protecting the glottis, the vocal folds are seen deep in there. And then air will continue from the larynx. This is the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage. And then air continues into the trachea. These are all tracheal cartilages. These are rings of hyaline, hyaline cartilage that keep the trachea open during the press, pressure changes of expiration. If we look behind, we can see between the esophagus and the trachea, we have some areolar connective tissue we can pull away. And on the posterior aspect of the trachea is the trachealis muscle. So it allows for a little bit of give so that food passing behind in the esophagus can push into the trachea without causing any problems. In the cat, the right lobe lung has four lobes. In the human, it only has three. So in the human, we have superior, middle, and inferior lobes on the right side. So in the cat, we have four lobes in the right lung, the anterior lobe, the middle lobe, the posterior lobe, and the medial stinal lobe. And then the left lung has three lobes, the anterior lobe, the middle lobe, and the posterior lobe. If you look, this muscle that has been cut away is the respiratory diaphragm, the prime mover of respiration. So when the diaphragm contracts, it pushes down on the abdominal organs and out on the thorax, which allows intrapulmonary pressure to drop because intrapulmonary volume has increased. Atmospheric pressure is then greater than intrapulmonary pressure and air will flow into the respiratory system. When the diaphragm relaxes, it will push back up into the lungs, decreasing intrapulmonary volume, increasing intrapulmonary pressure so that it's greater than atmospheric pressure and air will flow back out the respiratory system. If you look, this shiny layer of tissue on the outside of the lung is the visceral pleural membrane. So it's a simple squamous epithelial layer that secretes fluid into the space between the visceral layer and the parietal layer, which lines the thoracic cavity. So the pleural membranes uh, not only help to reduce friction between the organs as your lungs continuously um, expand and uh, relax, but they also allow for your lungs to stay inflated. So the negative pressure that's created by the pleural membranes helps to keep your lungs inflated. If you've ever heard of someone collapsing their lung, breaking a rib and collapsing a lung, the reason their lung collapsed was because they lost intrapleural pressure, which is the pressure between this visceral pleura and the parietal pleura. Condition of coronavirus ruined my class, anatomy and physiology, 202. Thank you, Jazz, for being here with us today. She's going to help us learn about how the respiratory system functions. 
using these pig lungs. Oh, look at those healthy lungs. So during inspiration, the respiratory diaphragm contracts, pushing down on the abdominal organs and out on the thorax. This increases intrapulmonary volume, which decreases intrapulmonary pressure. Atmospheric pressure is then greater than intrapulmonary pressure and air flows into the lungs. When the diaphragm relaxes, the volume in the lungs decreases, intrapulmonary pressure increases, and air flows out down its pressure gradient from high intrapulmonary pressure to low atmospheric pressure. And that is the respiratory cycle. The lungs are not actively involved in respiration. It's the pressure changes in physics that guide the movement of air. So why do the lungs expand and contract? And that's because of the elasticity that we find in the bronchial tree. Let us see what happens to smokers' lungs when they lose said elasticity. In the name of science, we made this poor pig smoke its whole life. Oh, and look at the decreased lung capacity that results. Oh my goodness, you can even hear it. So we've lost almost complete function of the lower lobes of the lung. Don't smoke. Go to school. This is your brain on drugs. Peace out.